Yes, I will uh, shortly introduce myself. My name is Jakob Winter Neumann, and I will be the moderator for this uh, session. We have approximately 40 minutes, and I'll keep track of time. I work as a plant production advisor at a advisor, local advisory center in LRU in Horsens, and I'm also secretary to the board of the Danish Reduced Till No Till organization, FRDK. I would like to welcome you all. We are about 120 people here for this panel discussion. And uh, the panel discussion will be followed up by, will follow up this uh, previous session with uh, Don Rikorski. First of all, I have asked the panel members to make a short and brief introduction of themselves. And we will be begin with Mr. Don Rikorski, and you have two minutes to just short introduce yourself and where you come from. Thank you. Okay, I am, um, I am Don Rikorski. I'm a retired soil scientist from USDA ARS. Uh, my experience with carbon is uh, totally by an accident that I will tell you about if you have time. And uh, if you were at my presentation, you can see what my biases are with respect to carbon. Uh, my name is Søren Ilsø, uh, and I'm a practical farmer. Uh, for 10 years, I have been doing minimum tillage, like many other peoples in uh, Denmark. Uh, but uh, during the years, I've seen some changes in the soil structure and uh, what cover crops can do. And uh, I've been more and more excited of uh, what is going on. So from uh, this summer here, harvest 2011, I decided to take the next step and uh, go direct drilling. I have reasons to believe this is the right decision because I've been making some experiments through three years who showed that it can function. But uh, four years ago, no more than four years ago, I was very skeptical to uh, no-till in Denmark in our conditions. So that was a little about me. Thank you. And my name is uh, Thomas Bergeman. I'm um, an agriculturalist. And I'm the managing director of CONSITO, which is a Danish climate think tank, independent, funded by independent altruistic foundations, uh, not by the government, not by business. We have about uh, 100 members, um, one third private enterprises from the energy sector, from agriculture, from the transportation sector, as well as the building sector. We have all the environmental NGOs, and we have the scientists. One third of, of the 100 members are businesses, one third scientists, and one third NGOs. And what we do is basically try to produce scenarios, reports, recommendations for primarily the policy level. So we're very much into the Danish government's uh, climate policy uh, development and try to influence them. And agriculture is a, is a major priority for us. Um, we have, luckily, among us, the chairman of our agricultural uh, group, which is Johanny Olsen. Thank you. My name is Janne Olborg Nielsen, and I'm a specialist advisor in knowledge, uh, at Knowledge Center for Agriculture here in Denmark. I work with soil tillage, among other things. And I'm responsible for the national field trials with tillage in Denmark. I find conservation, agriculture, and carbon management very interesting and very important because we should take care of our soils and prevent further decrease in soil organic carbon or soil organic matter. It is important in relation to establishment of the crop where we need a good seed bed. If we don't have enough organic matter, then we don't have good structural conditions and it leads to structural problems with the seedbed. And even though conservation agriculture, no-till or reduced tillage might not give us more carbon when we look at the whole, whole soil profile, we could benefit from the fact that more organic matter accumulate in the upper soil layer where it can help good structural conditions to develop and after some years be a good starting point for a good seedbed. 
Uh, I think this works now. Um, my name is uh, Jan Olsen. Um, I'm professor at Aarhus University in agriculture and uh, climate. Um, so I have an interest in climate. Uh, over the uh, uh, past many years, uh, I've been involved in, in various kinds of research, both modeling, uh, experimental-wise, and so on. Um, I've been involved with the Intergovernmental uh, Panel on Climate Change, uh, looking at these uh, issues we have with, uh, with climate, climate change and our uh, emissions. I was a member of the um, Governmental um, Commission on Climate Change Policy uh, here in Denmark that came out with a report a little over a year ago. Uh, on, on which I guess uh, also the current government will uh, be basing um, its change uh, towards a society that no longer uses fossil fuels. Uh, but on top of that, of course, we have issues uh, related to uh, emissions uh, from agriculture, and I'm one of the persons that provides uh, governments uh, with uh, advice uh, on how to reduce those emissions. And finally, I would like to say that uh, I'm, I'm currently actually leading a, a newly started European uh, project. It's called Smart Soil. Uh, it looks at various uh, ways uh, in terms of which we can manage crops and, uh, and soil to increase uh, productivity, uh, but also to better sequester uh, carbon in the, in the soil. We, we're not just uh, strictly looking at uh, no-till or conservation agriculture there, uh, but uh, a much uh, broader spectrum of, um, of research uh, and activities. Thank you to the board. And now to the to people out here, now you're free to ask any question you want. Could you please stand up and tell your name and where you come, or, and your profession we will be much appreciated. And then, when you ask the question, please address it to one of the me uh, panel board members here. The discussion is open. Who will be the first? <clears throat> Esben Korsgaard, I'm market manager for a company called Equalab. I know that, in, uh, for instance, in Belgium, they have regulations about the carbon content in uh, soil. So minimum every fifth year, the farmer uh, has to analyze the soil for the carbon content. And if the content is below a certain level, then he's not allowed to remove the straw from the field. And he needs to take other actions in order to increase uh, the carbon content in the soil. And of course, in Belgium, they have based it on local experiences and, and opinions. But, but, uh, but do you have... Uh, any idea about what is a critical level for, for carbon? If you go out and analyze your soil for carbon, how much should you look at or, or, or should you have? Uh, what, what is the critical level? Who was it? Uh, and the that, could be, that could be for, for you, Don. It could also be Jørgen Olsen, perhaps, who, who can say something about that. Um, that's an excellent question, and, and I have to give you the uh, scientific answer. It could be yes, no, and maybe. And... Uh, but it's, 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 a, it's a serious concern because, uh, at least in the U.S., when they're removing biofuels, they're taking the carbon off and there's nothing more going into the soil system except what is in the, in the roots. Well, in the maize plant, they've established that roots contribute a little bit more than the above-ground portion, and that's good. But one of the scientists at the lab where I retired from has made a rule of thumb that for a... Uh, uh, 10 ton production of, of maize that you might be able to remove about 50% of the biomass for bioenergy and return the, best, the rest to the soil and you will maintain the carbon level. And she is in the process of collecting data on that. I am not sure whether um, we should be maintaining the carbon level or whether we should be increasing the carbon level. And I have one, one slide that shows that since 1940, we have changed from hybrids and we have started using nitrogen fertilizer. And there has been a 5.5 fold increase in the grain yield and a 5.5 fold increase in the biomass. And the carbon for the last 60 years is still going down slowly. It suggests that the input of carbon is not as critical as whatever we're doing to cause it to go out. 
and you already saw my biases about intensive tillage. One unfortunate thing, we need a lot of research, and it will take uh, some time because Mother Nature works very slow in, in building and accumulating this carbon. Uh, and it, it becomes a very difficult challenge. I, I, wish, I wish I could give you an answer, but um, uh, it, it's just not there yet. The answer is that the question maybe is wrong. Um, because, <laughs> um, in, in, in fact, uh, I, I don't think you can, you can actually say that there will ever be a critical level uh, of, of soil carbon in, in, in the soil. Um, of course, carbon in the soil plays some role for soil functioning. There are some physical functioning of the, of the, of the, the soil that is related to the amount of carbon there. But there's a lot of other soil functions that do not really relate to how much carbon is there, but rather how much carbon flows into the system. Uh, because the biological activity of soils are not so much dependent on, on the actual stock of the carbon, but rather on the flow in there. Maybe if I could be allowed to show just one slide, could you show that, show that one? Uh, this shows uh, uh, a map of, of Denmark illustrating where we have the most of the carbon. Uh, or maybe it's more interesting to look at where we have the least. The least we have uh, on, on the eastern parts on, on our islands, uh, where we also uh, unfortunately have our loamy soils, uh, the more clayey ones. Um, if you look at the slide to the, uh, or, or the graph to the right, that shows how carbon content in a national survey uh, has been changing over the past 25 years. Uh, if, if you look at, at that slide, you will see that our loamy soils, the ones with the clay content, are the ones that are losing carbon. And they are already the ones that have the lowest amount of carbon. So, we, in fact, I would say in Denmark we have a serious problem in terms both of low carbon content in some of those loamy soils, but also in terms of having too little carbon going in. And both are a problem. On those souls. Yes, hello, my name is Rose Christoffersen, I'm a student, um, and I would like to ask Don Rikowski um, if, uh, whether it's not a problem that you uh, use the, the carbon argument as the primary one, uh, when you cannot conclude that there is a, a significant increase in the total carbon content in the soil uh, with reduced tillage. Uh, because there are many other arguments for reduced tillage, so it's not a problem to focus so much uh, on the carbon and maybe misleading people to think that you can store a lot of carbon uh, with reduced tillage. In fact, if you look at the soil carbon historically for the last 150 years and you look at the grain yields, soil carbon is going down, the grain yields are going up. The grain yields are going up for many different reasons, not related to carbon. But if we use carbon as an indicator of soil quality and we finally get to the bottom of the barrel, so to speak, with very little carbon, then we lose the soil quality and the soil functions that are important to us. And I, I'm not sure what the ultimate limit of that is. Sometime in, in we are going to uh, reach that limit and I, I, will, I don't know how to determine that. So I, I think in principle, we have to still minimize the carbon loss and, uh, and, and hopefully that will not affect the yields. I agree with you that the problem is very interesting with the decrease in carbon content, but uh, you, I don't know if you can use the argument that uh, reduced tillage and no-till will increase the carbon content. So I know that we have to find solution, but is no till a solution? You cannot conclude that from the statistics we have by now. Okay, I, I see. I see your uh, your point. <laughs> um, it's the location of the carbon that I think is most important in the no till or uh, conservation agriculture system. Um, I, I tried to very hurriedly go through four refereed scientific articles said that there's no statistical difference between no till and conventional till. I, as a scientist, I'm, and, and I'm, a, I'm a human, I'm allowed to have some biases. And I think that, that part of the reason is that we do not have enough detail on the methods and materials used to describe the no-till system in sufficient detail to make a decision on, on the degree of, 
soil intensity and soil mixing. And, uh, and so there is a lot of evidence to indicate that there is accumulation on the soil surface if there is no disturbance. And my personal opinion is that that provides many ecosystem services that are very valuable in terms of controlling erosion and, and soil degradation that even if there is not a significant difference in one meter, these other benefits are well worth the effort of, of maintaining a, a no-till system. Thank you. There is another comment from Mr. Th Thomas Fairman. Thank you. Um, just with a, a f response to your question, because I, th I think you have a point, and I guess Don is, is, is emphasizing it, that it's not conclusive whether conservation agriculture as such actually increases the carbon stock in the <coughs> soil. What we do know is that um, stopping the cultivation of organic soils, for instance, would increase the carbon content very much. Uh, we also know that a forestation of marginal agricultural lands will <coughs> increase carbon stock a lot in the soil. Now, I know that is not um, uh, the focus of conservation agriculture, but the point I want to make is that um, we do have some very ambitious targets with regard to, to reducing greenhouse gas emissions in this country and in the European Union. The current Danish government has a target of reducing greenhouse gas emissions with 40 percent by 2020 as compared to 1990. Actually, the more important target for agriculture is still the EU target of reducing, among others, agriculture's greenhouse gas emissions with 20 percent as compared to 2005. Now, the problem is that the current um, rules for how to count that reduction does not take into account any carbon sequestrated in the soil. So even if you do stop cultivating or plowing, draining organic soils, for instance, or even if you do <coughs> decide to grow forests on former agricultural lands, the carbon sequestration taking place there does the does not count with regard to actually achieving the EU target. This, I think, is a major political problem for the agricultural sector because actually it means that the only way to achieve, for instance, a 20 percent reduction in greenhouse gas emissions is by cutting conventional production with 20 percent. And that, I think, is not a politically very viable option at the moment. I know this is a slightly different concept, but I think it's important with regard to actually understanding what the targets are that we're trying to achieve, at least in the European Union. Thank you. There was another comment from Mr. Søren Ilsø. Uh, I think we also have to remember that no-till is just uh, not a question about, about plowing or cultivating or not doing it. Uh, no-till is a growing system. And uh, one of the important things in no-till is also use of cover crops and uh, rotation. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the carbon is only an indicator of what is going on in the soil. We don't, as I used to say, we know more about what is going on on the planet Mars as what is going on 10 centimeters under our feet because uh, carbon is an indicator of what is going on. That means how much humus is there and how much uh, microorganisms. And one of the things that accelerate when we are not turning the soil, that is uh, the mycorrhiza uh, fungus. And they are really key uh, organisms for the plant growth because they can uh, develop the root system to use the nutrients uh, much better as phosphorus and uh, nitrogen. So as Don said, uh, they have measured higher yields despite the carbon was reduced. That is only because we agricultural have compensated by using more nitrogen or other uh, inputs. But in the long term, we, we have to find a solution where it is going more on the soil's conditions. So I think we have to look much more about soil life com combined with carbon. If we take 100 tons of pure carbon and put on one hectare, we will not have a, 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 an excellent soil. Uh, it's more complex. Thank you. Uh, Alexandro Markish from the Opera Research Center. I have a comment, uh, a short comment and a, a question to the panel. Uh, my comment is, 
related to, uh, to 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 the previous uh, comment from the from the panel, and I totally agree with you. There is this dichotomy between uh, the agricultural policies and the environmental policies, and it's leading us in in, in Europe in a, in a, I think in a difficult uh, situation. We have now the new CAP, which is putting it has a component of uh, greening the agriculture in Europe, uh, where some uh, some measures are foreseen to to uh, store carbon uh, in in marginal lands, uh, but on the other hand, is not recognizing uh, the effort of a farmer to reduce its uh, uh, fuel fuel uh, uh, sourced emissions uh, as being a greening activity. So if he is producing with uh, less uh, uh, fuel uh, or less co consuming less fuel, uh, hence. Uh, emitting uh, lower, uh, uh, having uh, lower emissions, this is not recognized as as being a greener uh, method of production, and uh, I I think this is this is a, a something which uh, we need to address in Europe to to better correlate the the policies so that people have uh, farmers have finally a, a consistent image of what they have to do. Uh, my my question. I have the question, but I don't know to whom uh, should I address it. Maybe uh, uh, the panel will will react spontaneously. Uh, are there any soil structures where no-till is not recommended, or maybe some uh, uh, agricultural context with, uh, let's say, a high pressure in weeds or um, s s kind of uh, context? Uh, for the agricultural activity where this method is, is not recommended? Um, certainly. Uh, and, and, and I mean, in, in Denmark, we have, yeah. <laughs> we have problems uh, with, uh, with no-till and, and also with reduced tillage on many of our soils because many of the soils we have are sandy. Uh, and, and some of them also compact very quickly on, on, unless you actually do... Uh, some form of, of, of tillage. And, and this is a problem if you, if you want to go to no-till and then you get very compacted uh, soils. Um, so no-till no uh, is works better uh, the more clay, the more loamy uh, the, the soil are. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, quite a number of the uh, soils we have uh, in, in Denmark would not really be that suitable uh, or even it would be impossible uh, for, for no-till because it would uh, seriously uh, reduce the, the possible yields we would get. Um, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't worry about carbon and the <laughs> uh, also for, for those soils, uh, but then it needs to be some of the other elements uh, of, uh, that also we have with cultivation tills of retaining residues and so on. Thank you, and uh, now the comment for Thomas Feilman. Well, I mean, it's to just a short comment on your um, considerations about the common agricultural policy, which is, again, under revision. It seems to be under revision basically all the time, and it always takes a very long time to revise it. It's true what you say, that, that there are some green elements, uh, including a, I think it's a 7% set-aside of uh, nature areas or set-aside areas. And, and I had the pleasure of meeting the Danish agricultural minister the other day who who said that she was pressing very hard to, to ensure that in Denmark, at, at least, we would be able to concentrate these areas to actually uh, achieve, for instance, a forestation areas or setting aside of organic soils, kind of pooling these areas. Um, that's one thing. And, and then you, you talked about the fuel consumption. I guess that, I guess that this may be a question to you, to you Jan, but, but if the carbon content and the straw content in the loamy soils in the eastern part of the country actually do, do decline, I guess the result is heavier and heavier soils, and the common response from farmers would be larger tractors, bigger plows, and consequently more diesel. So, I mean, you, you have some point, and I think you touched upon it as well in your presentation. Uh, very briefly, uh, in my part of the world, we have uh, soils that have large amounts of Montmorillonite clay, and it results in holding the water uh, longer so that there's a delay of about seven days in the soil temperature being optimum for the germination of, of maize and, and soybeans. And this seven days costs the farmer yield in the delay in planting. And for that reason, many of them don't want to do that. 
it's just very difficult to get no-till established on, on a heavy clay soil when we only have 120 days frost-free in our, in our part of the world. And uh, seven days lost in producing maize makes a big difference in the yield. But I think we, we, there's some challenges that we've got to address, and um, uh, we need more research. So. Lars Erik Nielsen. Uh, mit spørgsmål er, my question is for uh, Thomas Fairman and uh, Jørgen Jolesen, and it's about this big plains we have in Denmark, about the biogas production, and all this uh, carbon we will burn off in this system. Uh, what will your, your opinion, opinion be about it, and what will the government, what are your recommendations for the government uh, about this? I think all the fibers we will burn off, and we will not have to return the carbon for the soil. Um. I might also be biased because I'm one of the, the advocates of, of, of biogas, of course. Um, this is, uh, I mean, this has to deal with, uh, with uh, whether you, how we actually get out of the fossil fuels. And, and part of getting out of the fossil fuels is we need to substitute this with something else. And part of that will be bioenergy. But of course, we should still do this uh, um, while maintaining uh, the, our soils. Now, <clears throat> we have some recent research uh, showing uh, that uh, the, the, the carbon we burn off or, or, or get off with the methane uh, from, the, uh, from the biogas uh, would otherwise have been rather quickly uh, lost from the soil. Uh, so the, uh, the reduction we actually get from putting our manures and and, and re plant residues and so on uh, through the biogas does not really to any great extent affect the amount of soil carbon. It, it will decline it a bit, uh, but not to any great extent. What's actually more important when it comes to soil uh, carbon, in my opinion, are roots. Uh, and, and the problem partly we have uh, with uh, many of uh, the uh, Danish uh, cropping systems is that we are growing a lot of cereals. Uh, and uh, often we are not having cover crops in those systems because cover crops do uh, an, another very good thing uh, for the soil in terms of giving another round of roots into, into the soil. And, and there's quite some research uh, globally, not uh, in, in Denmark though, showing that more of the carbon that is put in there by the roots are actually being retained uh, and, and provides uh, functions for the soil than for the above ground carbon. Uh, so I think we can more safely use the above ground carbon if we actually put in a bit more crops that provide roots. Mm -hmm.